Hello everyone. Welcome to the 11th local stack community event on building Amplify applications locally and doing cloud integration testing with local stack. I'm Hirsch and today with me, I have Christopher joining us from Mexico and Anka who's joining us from Texas. And, and guess what? Uh, I guess Anka is joining us as a speaker for the second time. I guess like she appeared a few months back to basically talk about her Spring Boot application that she developed mostly around shipment listing. And I'm so glad to have Anka and Chris, both of them for this particular meetup. So thanks for coming along. How are you doing, Chris and Anka? Glad to be back. <laughs> yeah, good. feels pretty good. Awesome. So how was your day? How was your week so far? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> For, for those guess... who don't know, I'm from Austria, but I'm vacationing in Texas, so it's very oh. hot. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Chris? Uh, I mean, the hurricane season is starting, so there is a lot of rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was oh. hoping that uh, there would be electricity today for this presentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a bit of a struggle. <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, so by the way, if anyone is interested, I'm not a speaker, but I'm just gonna put this shameless plug. I'm from India and it's the monsoon season. It's pretty much raining outside even right now. And I was having a pretty hard time in making sure that my mic does not catch all that noise from the background. So yeah, <laughs> I guess all three of us are coming from a, from a background that is pretty, that is quite of a struggle, I guess. So yeah, welcome everyone all over again. And I'm glad we have these new community events like coming along every month. This is the second time we are streaming this on YouTube and maybe the first time we are also streaming this on Twitter and LinkedIn as well. So a bit nervous about how will this exactly go and quite a bit excited as well. So if you have joined this community events before, you know that I don't spend much time in like talking about the whole stuff and we can just directly jump into the whole agenda and the talks that we have for today. So yes, um, so thanks again for joining our community event. Um, and this community event is gonna be all about how you can build your Amplify applications locally and test your AWS services against that and how you can do cloud integration testing with local stack plus test containers. And I guess both of the speakers bring a lot of experience and an expertise into these technologies. And I guess they would be able to provide a lot of insights into how you can get started with local cloud development and testing with local stack. So I have a very simple agenda for the day. Uh, the ritual is that first we are gonna go ahead with the announcements. So I have a few announcements reserved for the day and I'm just gonna go over them really quick because I don't want to waste much of your time on these kind of things. You can always read about our announcements on social media and the blog that we have. If you have not checked them out, you can go to localstack.cloud and check them out right now. Uh, the second would be like the first talk that we have for the day is getting started with Amplify for full stack development on local stack by Christopher. Christopher has been pretty much working quite hard on our Amplify CLI plugin. And I guess he will be walking us through that and how you can easily set up your Amplify apps locally and how you can test it against the local stacks, local cloud sandboxes. The second talk is going to be about local stack and test containers. Uh, previously, we have hosted Oleg, who is a DevRel at Atomic Jar regarding the test containers Java itself. And this time, uh, Anka will go like pretty much deep into how you can use local stack with test containers and how you can pretty much build and test and also perform the cloud integration testing for your AWS applications locally. And with all that, we will finally, finally wrap up with the Q&A part. So for the Q&A, you can join us over at slido.com. So Slido is a platform that we have been using for quite a long time for all of our Q&A purpose. And you can join slido.com and you can join through this particular code, which is 2352712. Uh, alternatively, you can also scan this QR code right over here on your mobile device. And I guess like I'll also share a link on the YouTube live chat so that you can easily join it through your web browser itself. So please put in all the questions that you might have about Amplify, about test containers, about local stack, and we will be more than happy to answer all of those questions for you. So with that said, I'll just jump right in. Uh, before every Q&A session, I will share the slider link right over there so that you can easily join through that itself. So yes, let's take a look at all our announcements for the day. So the first announcement, and it is something that's super exciting for the whole DevRel team, 
And it's that we have launched the first iteration of the Local Stack Academy to help all our community members and users to learn more about Local Stack. So a lot of time, people who are looking to start with Local Stack have been complaining that, hey, their learning resources are not up to the mark, or we don't simply know how to get started with Local Stack. How should I install Local Stack? How should I like set up the integrations to use Local Stack? And how I can exactly leverage Local Stack in a local dev and test environment? And guess what? Local Stack Academy is pretty much to solve this particular problem. So no matter if you're a cloud veteran or no matter if you are just learning about cloud and AWS right now, Local Stack Academy is pretty much geared to help you get started on your cloud journey with Local Stack. So if you're a learner, you can simply use the Local Stack Academy to like learn more about AWS and building cloud native applications. If you are a seasoned veteran, maybe you can learn more about Local Stack, about how you can do local dev and testing uh, with Local Stack itself. So to get started with the Local Stack Academy is pretty simple. Just head over to the Local Stack Docs at docs.localstack.cloud. And you will see that one particular panel over there, which is the Local Stack Academy. Just click on that and you will be greeted with a YouTube playlist and some extra supplemental information. So just get started to, uh, working on that. And I'm pretty sure like you will be able to get a lot of value out of this whole experience. The second announcement is pretty much something that we have been working on over the past few months. Uh, we are going to do a more formal announcement in the coming weeks, but here it is right now. So local stack is now an AWS partner and we have officially joined uh, the AWS marketplace. So for a lot of people, uh, like basically you try to uh, set up some cloud budget through the AWS itself. And a lot of people like who have been trying to use local stack have a bit of a trouble around like the budgeting issues and all of those kind of things. So with this whole AWS marketplace integration, you can quickly use a pretty much streamlined procurement process so that you can buy the local stack team license and you can get started with using the local stacks cloud development framework. And this is very, very useful for teams uh, who exactly want to place the local stack bills into their AWS budget itself. And this is a game changing experience for anyone who is looking to get started with the whole development and testing loops with local stack. Uh, the third announcement is also something that just went out this week. Uh, we have created a partnership with Lambda Test. And if you don't know about Lambda Test, uh, it is an AI powered platform that basically allows you to test your applications on a reliable basis. So local stack is a recipient of a grant that Lambda Test announced uh, the last year. And as part of this grant, uh, local stack has got access to an hyper execute uh, environment that Lambda Test has been developing. So with the hyper execute environment, you can pretty much execute your local stack test. And you can also see like an exceptional three times increase in the test execution speed. So we have been like using Lambda test with all our Terraform testing right now. And if you are looking out for a CI provider, uh, which you can use with local stack to basically increase your CI test speed, you can definitely check out on Lambda test. Um, and apart from this, I guess this is an special announcement from Anchor. So Anchor will be hosting a cloud dev exchange meetup uh, in Vienna. So if you're someone like who lives around maybe Vienna or Bratislava, you can pretty much join the next cloud dev exchange meetups. And this is one of the in-person meetups that we have been organizing for quite some time right now. We did the first iteration back in India when we and Nancy like hosted this. And this time Anchor is bringing this to Europe. So definitely join this meetup. And in this meetup, you're going to learn more about how you can use local stack for lightning fast feedback loops. And apart from this, we have collaborated with Labyrinth Labs. And Martin will be joining with us where he will basically discuss about how you can create a unified and reusable cloud native platform. And this will have a bunch of topics, which is not just restricted to local stack. So you can discuss about infrastructure design, Kubernetes, uh, observability, CI CD systems, and much more than that. And the final announcement is that I have been hosting these community meetups for the past one year right now, and I'm looking out for more and more new speakers. <clears throat> so if you're someone in the community and you just want to talk about AWS, Docker, cloud native, uh, and more of that, not just strictly restricted to local stack, please submit a call for proposal. And there would be a Google form link right on the YouTube live chat. So just go ahead, like just submit a bit of an abstract and what exactly you would like to talk about. And I would be more than happy to work with you on making this possible. So we appreciate all the community contributions and we need more and more people to come to these events and tell their story about what it is like for them to build cloud native solutions and also to maybe how they can revolutionize their dev and test uh, loops, maybe with local stack or maybe with some of, some of the other software that they have been working on. 
And with that said, I guess my rant is complete. So I'm going to hand over the stage to Christopher, who will be walking us through the first talk of the day. And that would be about getting started with Amplify for full stack development on local stack. So over to you, Chris. The stage is all yours. Perfect. Uh, OK, hi, everyone. My name is Christopher. I'll be presenting getting started with Amplify for full stack development on local stack. Uh, first, a little bit of me. My name is Christopher Pinson. I'm a software engineer at local stack. I've been involved with the company for around three years. I'm a service owner for cloud formation and Amplify, so my contributions mainly goes to those services. Uh, well, you can reach me through my corporate email, through the community Slack channel, and Pinson is my GitHub handle. Uh, so what is Amplify? Amplify is a comprehensive development platform that simplifies building a scalable web and mobile applications. Basically, it enables developers to create modern apps faster by abstracting the complexity of the infrastructure of, a, of the serverless backend. Mm, before going on, uh, some alternatives that you can find for Amplify uh, are Firebase from Google, Superbase, Heroku, Netlify, uh, Backendless, and Upright, depending on your uh, application requirements, you select one of these ones. But the main reason to use Amplify is that even though you create the resources through Amplify, you can still take advantage of the full capabilities of the AWS cloud. So. Uh, what does Amplify provide? Well, you, for your application needs, you find the you, you can use Amplify for your main needs. Uh, you can get uh, authentication resources, or a REST API, functions, data stores, data stores, a pop up uh, architecture, storage, predictions, and geolocalizations. Uh, the main thing about these resources that Amplify offers is that these uh, resources are abstractions of the AWS uh, uh, services, uh, catalog services. So when you are you you, you utilize uh, you use Amplify to get, uh, for example, uh, an authentication resource, you are actually dealing with the Cognito IDP service for a REST API. You are dealing with uh, API gateway uh, and so on for the other services, data source, AppSync, uh, AppSync uh, functions, AWS Lambda. Uh, how do we create the, how do we use Amplify? And how do we create the resources? Uh, there are two main solutions. The first one is Amplify Studio. It's a web application where you can drag and drop the your resources uh, to be deployed in the AWS cloud. And the second one is the Amplify CLI toolchain, a simple, a simple command line tool that uh, basically in it lets us uh, deploy these resources uh, with simple commands. And this one is the uh, main we are going to use because it also enables the some extra configurations. So how does the process look like? Uh, as a developer, you use the Amplify CLI to request some resources like an authentication resource uh, or a REST API. The tool will uh, create those resources in the AWS cloud and give you an output file with all the identifications for the resources uh, of the resources that you created and that output file, you put it in your uh, web or mobile application that is using the uh, Amplify libraries. Uh, you can basically use it uh, anywhere. Uh, and the Amplify CLI tool also allows you to do some testing. Basically, you can uh, create multiple environments uh, to, create, to test uh, resources or configurations for those resources. You can have multiple environments for staging, pre-production, testing. And also the Amplify CLI tool uh, allows you the mocking of those resources uh, locally in your computer. 
but these testing uh, options have uh, several disadvantages. The first one was basically you spend a lot of, of money on um, resources for testing. Also, the uh, the update of each resource uh, or the deploying of each resource is going to cost you a lot of time. And the second option uh, involves a lot of configuration on your part. Uh, you need to manage each ser each service individually and set up a custom configuration file for your application. So it knows how to uh, reach your lo local services. So uh, these are not like a simple, you cannot just dr drop in your local resources uh, into your Amplify setup. Uh, and that's where uh, LocalStack com comes in. LocalStack is a cloud emulation service that lets you emulate the AWS services in your local machine. Uh, and uh, so ba uh, and basically every tool that you have or library that uses a AWS uh, services, you can just point it to local stack and you will be uh, uh, working with your uh, local machine resources. Mm -hmm. So how does the process look like uh, with local stack uh, with the amplifier? Basically you do the same like with every other tool. Uh, um, you grab your Amplify CLI tool with a local stack plugin that uh, the Amplify tool now will create your, the resources into your local machine. And then uh, you get a simple output file. That output file, you again just, just put it in your web uh, or mobile application, and that's that. You don't need to manage anything more. Uh, currently, there are two solutions depending on the on the Amplify CLI ver tool version that you are using. Uh, if, mm, simply enough, if you are using the latest version, you just grab the Amplify uh, local stack plugin. And if you need uh, that, uh, and if you need a uh, really, and if you have a really old version of the Amplify CLI tool, you can just grab the the Amplify GS local. That is just a grabber, uh, another command that you use. Um, is that okay? We can start with the demo. Uh, Okay, uh, let's visit the Amplify local stack plugin repo for a moment. Uh, simply enough, you can you to install it. You basically install the package and run the Amplify plugin at command that will uh, extend your Amplify CLI tool. Uh, it will give you some options to to start using local stack. Uh, it's just uh, an extra parameters that you add, and then you can just start creating your resources in local stack. Uh, okay, let's start with the demo. Mm. Uh, okay, back in. Mm. Let's create your stack. We start our local stack instance, our pro instance. Okay, and it's ready. Uh, so uh, these are the, the commands. For example, to start a Amplify project, we are going to uh, tell the the Amplify CLI tool that our environment is going to be called name. The JS parameter just auto complete uh, use uh, makes the tool auto fill some options with the defaults, and the extra parameter use local stack to make sure that our resources are being created in local stack. Uh, start with A few minutes, but two, uh, a few a few seconds, but it's it's much less than 
then with AWS, you can see here our resources are being created. Yet, not yet. Okay, our project has been initialized. Uh, uh, the Amplify tool also has uh, an, a parameter called headless mode that allows a uh, user to define uh, the resources through JSON documents. So you don't have to input each option manually. And well, we can start creating and create the definition. Mm -hmm. The resource has been defined successfully, and then we can push it to local stack. See our resources functions are being created. Uh, the latest version of the Amplify CLI tool now uses cloud formation to create the resources. It used to create the resources manually through each. Uh, uh, through each uh, service API, but now it's cloud formation. Okay, it's uh, almost done. Here I'm uh, here I'm adding an authorization resource, uh, basically a Cognito identity pool for my application. And as I mentioned, uh, here I have my output file that uh, have all uh, all the definitions that or results that my front uh, my web application needs, like the identity pool, the the client ID, the type of security that I'm going to use for for my application, and then I just put it on my application. Okay, we can start on again on service. Okay, my application is ready. And start with this one. Okay, here I have a simple sign in and sign up form. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Oh. Let's see what happens if I try to login. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe I should start uh, showing the code uh, first. Um, here I have a simple uh, uh, view uh, web application. Uh, the main takeaway here from the code is that in the importation uh, in the importation of the libraries. Uh, here I have my uh, the import of the UI elements from also the import of the library the amplify library and the uh, import of the configuration i got from the cli tool the only addition i have to do to make it function with local stack also is adding the pointing the ampli telling amplify that i'm going to work with this endpoint and that's all you need to do um, okay, well, let's start with the, with a simple try with this one. Uh, sign in. Okay, 
my user doesn't exist. It tried to contact local uh, local stack. Let's check with my instant running. Yeah, uh, someone tried to log in with the uh, with the invalid user. User not found. Uh, let's uh, register some uh, a user. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 this password. Uh, uh, okay, the password is too short. And uh, this is some message coming from the Cognito IDP service because it knows that for this identity pool, uh, I have uh, a default of uh, a character minimum for the password. So let's extend this. My user is, has been set signed up. Uh, I just need to confirm the account. In local stack, you can configure it a uh, email service to make it uh, send the emails, but for now it's not necessary. Here, the logs provide me with the confirmation code that can I can use to manually using the AWS local pool. Uh, uh, the, I can use this command to validate the, the user. I just need the uh, the user data, like the, the, like the, uh, the account, the client ID that it's in my export file. Um, this is the okay. First of all, I need to remove the account. Let's do this thing. Uh, okay. Let's see. And uh, my user has been confirmed. Now I can I should be able to Again, uh, let's try with another password. Okay, the local stack is telling me that the user doesn't exist. Let's try with the correct password. And oh, I didn't get a message, but the user got confirmed. And that and that is all you need to do to have a. Uh, uh serverless authorization ser uh, service in you in, in your local machine That's all. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all. Uh, I just finished. It's the person. Awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, Christopher, for showcasing this awesome demonstration about how to use Amplify. I guess we do have a few questions uh, coming up on the Q and A right now. So maybe let me just quickly share my screen, and we can just walk over that. Awesome. Uh, I guess the very first question that we have right over here is, does local stack offer something for Amplify Studio by application? So I guess you were you were talking a bit about like how someone can use Amplify Studio for all the UI blocks that someone would like to use to construct an Amplify app. Is there any plan for supporting that by web application or something? I mean, the closest thing we we have, I think it's for the public, it's a... Uh... Mm -hmm. It's a Chrome extension that points the AWS console into local stack, but um, we haven't tested it. It works for Amplify Studio. Mm -hmm. The main solution we have is the the extensions for the CLI command. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, so just in case if anyone is kind of missing out on this particular extension, uh, we have an extension called as local serve. Uh, is it the extension that you were talking about, Chris? Yep. Yeah, so local serve is an extension that basically allows you to redirect your AWS service calls to local stack. So if you actually have an application and 
the end like the endpoints are basically configured to use the real AWS cloud. You can just install this Chrome extension, and this will redirect all of your AWS API calls to local stack itself without changing a lot of your code right over there. I guess the first time I discovered this, I was having a bit of a trouble with Cognito implementation. And then I discovered this extension. I was like, okay, this is a perfect fit for me. I don't have to change a lot of code into the application right now. So maybe I'll just share this link right over uh, the chat. And anyone who is interested to learn more about this can just navigate to the uh, documentation. And we have a very simplistic documentation right now. And you can get started with using the local surf. So thanks again, Christopher, uh, for this. I guess we have another question is that how is local stack support for cloud formation like last i checked it had a few missing resources uh, and i guess like you're the service owner for cloud formation so you might be the best person to talk about this <laughs> yeah i'm secondary yeah. in that but uh, the <laughs> the support for the resources keeps growing we have some uh, and a pretty good uh, amount of announcements for cloud formation so yeah the if you find uh, that we are not supporting a, a resource a resource and we do have the service mm -hmm. please just write an issue and we will get uh, we get to it as soon as possible makes sense uh thanks a lot i guess we have this one question which has received a popular vote is that can we test amplify bills on local stack mm depends there are several ways you could do it uh, the amplify cli allows you to import uh, existing projects uh, or resources into uh, a new one mm -hmm. so if you mm, kind of understand what uh, the resources and the id how they function you can just import them to a new uh, amplify project and that amplify uh, that new project you push it to local stuff that, uh, that that's how I would try to do it um, I'm not listening to you uh, I oh can hear you the classic problem of being on mute and speaking. <laughs> but I was just asking like uh, how well does mobile application development work with local stack? I guess Amplify does support Android and iOS development. I... Mm, yeah, sure. As long as you are able to point your your mobile application to a custom endpoint that will, that points to the machine uh, mm -hmm. that is running local stack, it sh you should be able to. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I guess like uh, this almost gave an idea to me and Anka because like Anka is the owner of Developer Hub, and maybe we can have the next application that is like quite a focused on building mobile applications, like building AWS powered mobile applications with local stack. So would be kind of a fun project. I always <laughs> encourage everybody to add an interface. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Uh, and with that said, I guess the first talk for the day is over. So I would like to bring Anka for the second talk, where she will be discussing about cloud integration testing with local stack and test containers. And if I see the community right now, if there is one particular integration that everyone seems to love using with local stack and that's test containers. So like my curiosity is a bit satisfied by seeing all the good tweets going about test containers and local stack. Maybe I can get some more technical insights into how this whole thing exactly work out. So over to you, Anka, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Harsh. Um, I have my screen here, but I don't know if you can see. Oh, there it is. OK, let's switch to presentation mode. OK, so um, for the second part of this meetup, we're going to be talking about um, how you can uh, have easier cloud integration testing uh, with local stack. Uh, supported by test containers. Uh, you've probably seen me around, but if you're new here, uh, my name is Anka. I'm a developer advocate at LocalStack. I've been with the company for a little over uh, half a year. And if you ever want to get in touch, you can always email me at this email address. <laughs> and you can also uh, DM me on um, x.com. I know it sounds strange. It's not Twitter anymore. Um, so feel free to reach out. 
so let's dive in. And since I am on vacation, let's set the stage with a little anecdote and um, have like a light transition into the problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, so uh, let's say that we have a um, software engineering team that are tasked with delivering a new uh, application on AWS Cloud. We'll call them the software ninjas. Um, they, uh, this sparks their curiosity. They start uh, learning and uh, gathering information on what, what they need to do. Uh, and they uh, dive into developing. And while starting to work on their local machines, they soon find out that there are lots of dependencies that have resources in the cloud. So it's not as straightforward as they expected. Uh, they um, even sooner find out that the dev and test loop is extremely slow and tedious uh, because every local change needs to be packaged and uploaded to the cloud for testing. And I would say that sometimes this would uh, discourage testing because um, everything is so slow, you just focus on development, right? Uh, and uh, at a certain point, the software ninja has a red built in their feature branch, uh, and they can't uh, efficiently test and debug their code in the CI CD pipeline. Uh, we're going to touch a little bit on this topic a little later towards the end. Um, next up, you can imagine that the whole team uh, is using Gitflow for development. That means one CI build per feature branch. And there's an explosion of different environments and resources, thus spiking up the cost. And so the, the manager uh, complains about it and is trying to tone it down in terms of, um, in terms of cost. But luckily, local stack and test containers work beautifully um, in that regard. So uh, let's talk about all the important testing that needs to be done. Uh, one of my colleagues created a beautiful uh, pyramid with four layers, but I wanted to keep the cat theme. So here we are uh, on a scale from very little to a lot at the bottom. Uh, we can uh, categorize testing um, in four different slots. So you have mocking uh, at the top of the pyramid uh, which uh, means that you would mock your cloud APIs, uh, but that doesn't give you um, a lot to test of your system. So the, the testing is pretty limited. Uh, on the second level, you would have service emulation, uh, meaning you would repl replace individual services with local versions. And that could work uh, well with services such as Postgres or MySQL, but if you want to use DynamoDB or S3, for example, you're out of luck. Uh, then you could um, switch to cloud emulation, uh, meaning that you would have full, a full cloud emulation with service uh, integration. And if you haven't already guessed, this is where local stack comes in. And the next best thing to do is having a stage environment, uh, which represents obviously the highest fidelity because it actually runs in the cloud. But you want to push back on this as much as possible and only use it before production because you want to save on cost. Um, so let's take a little break <laughs> and uh, jump to story time a little bit about my background if you don't know me. Uh, I used to work as a uh, backend software developer um, in my previous company. We would have um, our own services, internal services, and then we were tasked to bring in a new external service that we needed to, to integrate. So this uh, gave birth to five to 10 uh, other services, smaller applications, microservices, if you will, uh, that needed to facilitate this, um, this integration. So testing was not um, as easy as, uh, as easy and straightforward as we hoped it would be. Uh, and we had to uh, mock most of these um, endpoints in our, in our integration tests. So this is what, this is an example of what we had to deal with. Um, for one uh, system integration test, 
let's say there would be three interactions with three different endpoints, we would have to um, mock all of those. We were using wire mock. Um, so we had to define the endpoints, the request body, uh, the, um, the response. Uh, sometimes it would be uh, 200 OK. Sometimes we, we had to do a 404. So it was tedious. Integration tests um, were not um, my favorite thing to do. And we also had to always make sure that we know what other services are responsible for and what all of these endpoints uh, do. So we didn't want to get this wrong. Um, on the other hand, unit testing is a breeze, and I never had any any issues with that. So how can we bring the ease and speed of unit tests into these integration tests? Because we all know that um, AWS cloud services are complex and, well, hard to test. So by now, you probably know that local stack is an official, ofi official module of test containers. Um, I think this has been a thing for a few months now. Uh, so this is enabling a lot of um, AWS uh, service users to uh, streamline the, their tests. So I guess as every, every meetup presentation <laughs> needs a demo, uh, let's jump into it. But first, uh, let's have a look at the diagram that um, we prepared. Uh, this is something I built um, to, to have a, a basic um, infrastructure, but um, I didn't want, want it to be too hello world. So uh, here we will be, deal let's pretend that um, instead of the postman client here, we would have a front end client, which uh, communicates with a back end stack. Um, and we have an API gateway that, uh, handles the requests for uh, creating a quote um, with um, a special, a dedicated Lambda and for also for fetching a quote. And these two communicate with an S3 bucket. If you're confused about the, the quote object, it looks like this. This is the, the JSON representation. Every quote has an author and a text. Uh, let's say we really like Shrek co quotes. So we would have something that Donkey says in this case, and in the morning I'm making waffles. Um, so back to, uh, to the structure, the add quote Lambda has, um, has some validation in place. It needs to check that the quote has an author, has a text. Um, it will create a text file, put the JSON in the text file, name it after the author and put it in the S3 bucket. And the, the get lambda uh, will receive a query parameter uh, named after the author, which will also be the, the text uh, file's uh, title. Uh, and it will fetch, fetch and read the, the text file from the bucket. So with integration testing, we need to make sure that all of our workflows um, are working as expected. And in this case, we this is very basic. We have four, um, well, three, four services, uh, and we already have um, four, four workflows that, that we want to test. And we need to make sure that we have a successful uh, post operation. We need to make sure that we have a successful get operation. Uh, we also need to make sure that we test for failure and the exceptions are uh, raised correctly when, um, something occurs. Uh, so for example, for, for a post um, action without um, the, author, the author field, an exception will be thrown. Uh, we also need to test that we get a 404 for the wrong um, query parameter. So let's jump into the code. Oh, that went too far. My IDE is now switched to light mode, which feels very wrong, but hopefully ev everybody can see this. If not, I'm going to ask my colleague to say something, uh, but I think this is pretty readable. Um, 
as you can see, I already prepared the, the tests here. We have one for a successful post action, for successful get, um, and we also need to check for exceptions. But let's check how we configure our um, local stack container. We, this is our main, um, our main testing class, uh, and we have abstracted away the, um, the local stack configuration into a parent class. So we have um, our everything is provided by the um, by the test containers library. So this is something specific to test containers. And by the way, you need to add these three dependencies to whatever dependency management system you are using, whether it's Maven or Gradle or anything else. Um, okay, so we're configuring our container here. Uh, we're going to be using the pro image, the 2.2.0. Uh, we have our um, local stack API key that's an environment variable, and it will be read from that source. Um, we are using init hooks, and if you're not familiar with init hooks, they're basically scripts that run when your container is um, started, when it's ready, when the uh, Python process is running. Um, and we have our Lambda Uber jar here that we uh, hand over to the container. And we also have the init script, which looks something like this. Uh, we're using the AWS CLI, the local um, wrapper, which points to the local stack endpoints. It's um, a wrapper configured to do that. And we have everything we need um, set here. We create a an S3 bucket. We create the lambdas that we need, one, two. Uh, we create the API gateway. We're using a custom um, REST API ID here to make sure that the endpoint is always the same. Um, everything else we need to configure for the API gateway, the parent ID, resource ID, the methods, the post, and the get. Um, then we create a deployment. This will all, all be in the, um, in the repository. I will share if you want to take a closer look. Um, and at the end, we have this um, little phrase, finished creating resources. I will circle back to that in a few minutes. Um, OK, so, so much for the... For the container configuration, we have our logger. We also create a Lambda client, which we will need a little later. Uh, let's have a look at the tests. Um, I can start running them because this will take a few seconds. And we can have a look at the first test. Uh, we have our uh, local stack endpoint, which is given to us by the container. Our base URL, which we know, which will be REST API, the ID, the deployment, and um, the, the path that we, we chose. Um, we have an expected response uh, that we would get after the post, um, uh, the post request. We're using an HTTP client. Uh, we create a, an HTTP post request uh, with the desired body, which we talked about earlier in the slide. Uh, we have an author and the text of the author. And then we just um, fire it against local stack. And we need to check that we get a uh, 200 OK um, status code. And the, res the expected response matches the response that we get. So these are real life um, requests against um, a real a real API gateway. And the same goes for uh, having a successful get operation. We pass the, um, the query parameter, uh, which will be, in this case, the name of the author, which is Donkey. Uh, but then we also need to make sure that we get the right exceptions in the right place. Um, for example, we have this method that's called test exception is thrown on post wrong JSON. So the JSON will not have the structure that we, we expect it to have. Uh, it will be missing an, an author. Um, so the exception, uh, the response will be the exception 
um, message, uh, which is the following field cannot field cannot be empty author because it's missing that. And we need to make sure that we get a bad request here, a 400, and the expected response matches the, the response body. Uh, and the same with um, the wrong or the failing uh, get action. So since this code has already be, been written, it's, um, it's a little hard to, to go through it and explain everything. But I wanted to share a bunch of um, tips and tricks that I found along the way, uh, which will potentially help you write um, better tests or faster tests because uh, sometimes you just um, have issues and you don't, don't know where they're coming from. Uh, so one of them is to use a waiter to make sure that your lambdas are in state active and not just created because um, our init scripts will run, but that doesn't mean that uh, the lambdas will be active. Uh, this is a little graphic that I pulled from the um, Amazon, from an Amazon blog post um, that shows you that when you create a function, first it goes in pending state before it can move on to active and receive requests. So you need to um, make sure that the state is correct. Otherwise, uh, your whole structure will fall apart. Um, so, and this is how you, um, how you create a waiter. Um, you have your Lambda client that will help you for that. That was why we we instantiated the Lambda client. Uh, this is provided by the um, AWS SDK, the Java SDK, by the way. Uh, we have a get function request <clears throat> and we named the function that we want to have in, um, in state active. And we have this method that on the waiter um, that is called uh, wait until function active. And then we, you don't have to log it, but in this case I did and you can see all the information that um, you can have for that function. Another tip would be to use this nifty configuration to scan the local stack logs and make sure your instance is in the right state uh, before your, your tests can start. Um, and by that, I mean having this um, finish creating resources in the, um, in the log, as I showed you earlier, here, uh, this will be coming out of the logs of the container. So uh, the, the tests will know uh, to, to wait until this message appears before they, they can start running. So that, that will save you, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes <laughs> in figuring out what's, what's wrong. Um, another thing that is very helpful and it, it was helpful for, for me, was uh, streaming the container output to an SLF4J logger. Um, and you can do it like this. Um, test containers uh, provides an out of the box uh, log consumer, which can um, capture and stream the logs from inside the container into your, um, into your terminal or console where you have your logs going. That's why here, for example, where you run this uh, test successful post action, you will see the logs. And here you can see that a uh, post request has been made at this endpoint. Um, and we got a 200 uh, status code as a result of that. Um, again, you can find all of this in the, in the repository. I will be providing that. Uh, no need to, to go through it right now. And I think that concludes our tips and tricks session and also my presentation. Um, thank you. And before I leave you, um, I would like to add a few PSAs. Um, Local Stack uh, created a mini blog series. Well, these are mini blogs that come out on Monday, Wednesdays, uh, and Fridays. Uh, and you can look for them on LinkedIn and x.com. Uh, we will be sharing them. Uh, these are inspired by frequently asked questions or Stack Overflow um, questions and issues 
And if you're interested in um, some of these writings, uh, feel free to check them out. And the second thing is please join, join my meetup in Vienna. It's going to be great. And that was it. We can move on to the Q&A. Um, Harsh? Awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, Anka, Thank for you. this wonderful talk. I guess I did I did know like some of the parts of the talk, but I guess the last parts where you talked about like new tools and technologies, I guess I was pretty much unaware about that. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks a lot for sharing all these cool insights. Maybe I can share my screen and just quickly go through all the questions that we have for the day. Uh, cool. I guess the very first question is like, how well does Local Stack Pro work with desk containers? Um, it, it's that... kind of vague, but I would say very well. Uh, I mm -hmm. forgot to show you, but I'm going to mention it. There's also a GitHub Actions workflow in the in the same repository, and you can use the pro image there and configure your uh, your secret uh, API key. So I would say it's pretty solid. Yeah, I guess Oleg did also demonstrate like how you can pretty much configure your API key. All that you need to add is an environment variable. And yes. just pull the latest local stack pro image because that's where all the pro APIs are right now. It's not on the community image. And once you do that, I guess it would be pretty easy to work with local stack pro. Uh, I guess one of our customers was actually using the local stack pro with uh, test containers itself. I'm just going to link the case study right on the live chat. And maybe if you want to have some inspiration about how you can structure your projects to use local stack pro with test containers, you can immediately take a look at that. Uh, Coming to the second question, I guess I'm not so sure about that. Like, does local stack work with the new desk containers cloud? Um, if they offer it, then it should. Um, yeah. I I think we we do agree mm -hmm. to that, right? Uh, I hope so, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I I haven't used the the test containers cloud, but I know that's a paid feature, so. It, it should, it should be there. Yeah, I guess it is still in beta right now and our friends at Atomic Jar might be releasing this out pretty soon. Uh, I guess we do have a option to get a demonstration right now. So maybe once it is out, then it would be super awesome to just get started with creating epiphemeral AWS environments using local stack and test containers. So yeah. just hoping for the best. <laughs> awesome. Um, I guess this is a question that also came up in the YouTube live chat. And it is like, can we use Pulumi or Terraform with local stack test containers integration? Um, I haven't tried it, but in theory, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you can create your resources any way you want. So um, I assume you can also run a Terraform script against that. I tried using the SDK clients um, previously. Um, so it, it should, in theory, it should work. Yeah, I guess uh, once we are putting out more content around test containers plus local stack, maybe this can be one of the use cases that we can yeah, try to cover. Yeah, that's that's a good yeah. point. <laughs> Thank exactly. you for that question. Sure. And the final question, I guess, like it came up a bit before, is that is there any best practices guide for using local stack in such a setup? So I guess Anka did explain like a few of the recommended practices. I mean, Anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, those were. Um... Those were tips that worked for me and saved me in some situations. So mm -hmm. um, again, this would be something that we could dive into deeper and uh, gather mm -hmm. more um, such good practices. Uh, but awesome. in general, I, I think you can do whatever feels right for you. Every mm -hmm. case is unique. Makes sense. And with that said, this was the last question for the day. I guess we have been pretty punctual. The uh, rest of the meetups used to go almost 10 to 15 minutes ahead of the time. This time we are just a minute ahead. So yes, I guess I can stop sharing now. And with that said, thanks everyone for participating in the community event today. I guess everything went pretty well. We had some pretty awesome talks and demos. So thanks again, Christopher and Anka for taking your time. And I hope to see all of you in the next meetup. If you have not joined uh, our meetup community yet, uh, now is the perfect time to do that. So maybe I'll just link uh, our meetup community right on the chat. So do join them. And you can also find a Google form link in our description. So if you want to talk about local stack 
or any other technology that you have been working with in the past uh, or present right now, maybe just put up a proposal and we would be more than happy to host you in one of our community meetups right here. And with that said, thanks again, all of you. I hope you have a great rest of the day or evening or whatever time zone you're situated in right now. And I hope you enjoy your vacation, Anka. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great rest of the, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye.